welcome back. Today I'm talking about sleep. My babies are sleeping between 12 to 14 hours a night consistently. They're eight months old, but technically they're only six months old based on their adjusted age. Um, is that what it's called? They were born at 30 weeks and technically they're still like on their bodies six months old, but they're eight months old. You know what I'm saying? But they're sleeping a lot overnight and then they sleep two to three hours of naps twice a day. So like a two to three hour nap in the morning and a two to three hour nap in the afternoon. So they have a lot of sleep throughout the day and I am gonna share with you some techniques I've used. But first, let me just say, I am coming from the perspective of a twin mom. <laughs> I am no doctor, I am no sleep expert, I'm a speech pathologist and I'm a twin mom. <laughs> so that's my level of experience, none. But I have these babies and there were a couple things that I did when I was desperate back in the day, desperate to start some kind of a sleep training situation because I had enough of the rocking and I had enough of the no sleeping and I'm sure you've gotten to that point too if you're watching this video, maybe you're feeling a little desperate too. So when I had the babies, they came home with me after two months of being in the hospital and we endured the, you know, newborn phase of no sleep. You know, that's what everyone goes through. <laughs> and with two babies, it's like uh, double no sleep. It was very overwhelming, but I didn't want to rush into sleep training because the sound of sleep training sounded brutal to me. Brutal in terms of like for the babies. I didn't want them to cry. I want them to feel that comfort of like being rocked to sleep and I don't want them to feel abandoned and lonely and or are they too little. I, I was always confused with the sleep because my babies were premature and should I go off of their actual age or their adjusted age because if they're four months old and I can technically start doing some sleep training at four months old, but they're technically only two months old, when should I start? <laughs> so around, what was it? I think it was around five months. It's getting foggy, but I think it was around five months old, but they were technically three months old. I'm going to go off of their actual chronological age for you, but just keep in mind they were two months premature. So it was around five months that there was a day that was a turning point where my boys were up multiple times over the night uh, for several nights and like that's normal. I'm pretty sure that's normal. But the routine that we were in was rocking them to sleep. I always had two people at bedtime and at nap time which was pretty much every like hour or two hours or whatever it was back then. It was very frequently that we were going in and rocking them. And it was taking longer and longer and longer to rock them to sleep. We were just, and they didn't even seem comfortable when we were rocking them. I mean, we would just hold them and uh, they were very scratchy. And then we would put them down and they would scream and you feel so bad. You're like, okay, sorry, I'll pick you back up. That was the situation and I couldn't figure out, are they hungry overnight? Are they really just tired? Are they getting nap trapped with me? Huh, I don't know. So I asked my pediatrician and pretty much her response kind of ticked me off because I, I came to her saying, I have a question about my baby's sleep. And her response was, oh, it must be good because at four months old, 95% of babies sleep throughout the night. So is it, is it good news? I'm like, a girl, no. If I'm coming to you with a question about sleep, I'm not here to brag that my babies are already sleeping through the night. So uh, no, <laughs> not good news. So I was already a little bit like, uh, I'm gonna take what you say with a grain of salt. Is that the expression? <laughs> For some reason that doesn't sound right to me, but I, I felt like that was a little off-putting to me. You know, what are you trying to say? Make me feel bad? So, cause I feel like sleep is very personal and um, 
obviously sleep is personal to you and to me. You fall asleep probably differently than I fall asleep at night and babies are just little people. So, you know, they're gonna have their own situations. Then add multiples into the equation. There's a lot to consider. So I felt like her take was gonna be a little mine in the sand and she was gonna act kind of like a know-it-all and she does know it all because she's a pediatrician, but I just didn't like the approach, if you know what I mean. But she did go on to say, in a very blunt way, they should not be rocked to sleep and they should not be fed to sleep. Um, like if they wake up in the middle of the night, they should at this point be able to go longer stretches in between eating. And so instead of going in and picking them up and feeding them, just let them kind of cry for a very short amount of time. And the bottom line was, she said, I wouldn't go hardcore sleep training at this point, like letting them cry for 20 minutes, but just ease your way in. She's like, don't pick them up right away. Maybe just see what happens. And in the back of my mind, I knew that's not gonna work. My babies are gonna scream forever. And so, that served though as my starting point for a shift in how I approached the sleeping situation. And I went home and I took her input and then I also Googled a bunch of stuff because she also didn't really factor in the fact that the twins wake each other up. It was always so frustrating if I got one to go to sleep, then the other one was like Meh! And then this one's like Meh! So it just, it's complicated when you got two. And I felt like I needed multiple people's input because like I said, sleep is personal to everybody and not one approach will work for everybody. So I wanted to take bits and pieces of everybody's advice. So I um, Googled the crap out of the internet on sleep. And what I felt comfortable with in my soul was a three, five, 10 method. And that was you know, you have a routine established. Obviously, you'll have a nighttime routine and a naptime routine, whatever that is. If it's putting lotion on them, reading them a book, singing them a song, dimming the lights, you just set the stage. And that, oh, I had that in place already at bedtime. So I did feel like we have a nap and a bedtime routine to set the stage. But then um, the three, five, 10 method was really what helped. You know, you put the baby down and you let them cry for three minutes. And then you go in and you don't pick them up, but you pat them. And you console them, you say, I love you. Mm. And then you leave, but you don't stay too long. And then you go in five minutes later and then pat them, but don't pick them up. And then you leave. And then 10 minutes later, pat them. And then you leave. And then every 10 minutes after that, you go back in and eventually they stop. And I was sure that this would not work for my babies. Well, it did. The first couple of times that we tried it, we went the full three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, and then multiple 10 minutes intervals after that. Um, but then it took about two days and it was brutal. It was very hard. My mom was there helping me at the time and she and I both can't stand the crying like it hurts us to the core, but her, she especially has a really, she had to go sit outside, she couldn't stand it. And so I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm horrible. I'm putting my kids through like torture and she was kind of making me second guess myself, like should I really be doing this? Is this humane at this age? But I felt really desperate, like I need to do something. But then after a couple of days of this approach, they would go to sleep after the three minute interval and I would go in and pat them and then that was, that was it. And from there, it, it, was, uh, it was magical. We, every single time we put them to sleep, my husband and I, or my mom and I, um, if we would just actually put them down and we wouldn't rock them before we put them down and we just simply put them down and when they would actually fall asleep, we'd all like look at each other in amazement. Like, did that really actually happen? So it took a couple of days of that three, five, 10 method for us. 
that that broke the nap trapping that I think was happening. They were learning like, I wanna be rocked, don't pull me down. I wanna be held. <laughs> and I think that that's basic uh, sleep training for a singleton or a multiples person. You know, when do you start putting them down? Should you ever rock them to sleep? Don't go by me in terms of sleep training, okay? I'm just telling you how our course went with getting the babies to sleep through the night. Now, the way it is now. So we started there, we broke the nap trapping, we broke the rocking to sleep, and we never do that anymore, and they fall right asleep. And it gradually progressed, so they weren't sleeping through the night for quite a while. They would sleep like four hours and then four hours, and it was kind of inconsistent. But I would say for the past two weeks, they've been sleeping through the night every night. And on some occasions, they sleep 14 hours <laughs> straight and they don't wake up. And what I will attribute that to, these big long stretches of sleep, um, is their personal preference. I think that uh, every baby is different. And my babies are identical babies and they have very, very similar sleeping habits. So. If I put them both down, they usually, if they are gonna sleep a 12 hour stretch, they both sleep the whole night. And the 12 to 14 hour stretches at night, I have absolutely no idea what to attribute that to. And um, I do think that it's helped being quarantined and being home and being able to keep them in their same environment and we have such a repetitive routine that we wake up, we feed, we play, we put them right back down. They're never too far from their bed. We just put them down for their nap. And I think sleep begets sleep. So the more they sleep, the more they want to sleep. But all I'm gonna say is they are their own people and your babies are their own people. So I, ha I have no idea why they sleep that much. They just do. Um, and I will just tell you this, that a lot of people will tell you some basics about baby sleep that are like, that they think uh, can be generalized to all babies. One, if a baby is overtired, they won't sleep. I am sure you've heard that. And maybe that's true for, it's true for my sister's baby. If she's overtired, she just won't fall asleep. For my babies, if they're overtired, they fall asleep. They, they fall asleep on their play mat. They'll put their heads down and they, they fall asleep on the play mat. And another thing that people will say is if you keep them up later at night, they won't sleep in later. They'll still wake up at that whatever time they wake up in the morning. And that could very, I think it is very true for a lot of people. True for a lot of babies on the internet and true for my sister's baby. She has an internal clock that's very strong and she wakes up at the same time pretty much every morning. Well, if my boys go to sleep later, they sleep in later. It just is how it works. I'm only saying that to help you break out of the mentality that it's a one size fits all approach to sleeping. Um, I would encourage you to go look around the internet at a bunch of other twin moms sleeping videos because what works for me might not work for you might work for another person. It's all very personal. But um, I wanted to share this with you because when you have the victory of getting your babies to sleep through the night, you feel like you just wanna proclaim it to the whole world and share the news, the very good news, and it's a huge feat. But I also do not wanna come off like a know-it-all, like, know, like I know anything, because I don't. Again, I'm just a little speech pathologist over here who, only has experience with that and only has experience with my own babies. Um, just thought I would share. I think the three, five, 10 method was for us was what broke the cycle. Oh, and the other thing I hear a lot of twin moms say is um, that the crying, if one cries, it doesn't wake the other up. So don't worry about that. That's not even a factor. For my babies, it does. If one baby cries, it wakes the other up. So again, it's just to say, every baby is different. Some people fall asleep, 
scrolling through Instagram, watching Bravo, and then have a hard time falling asleep, but you know, that's what they do before they go to bed. And then some people read a book and they count backwards from 100 and they close their eyes and put a sleeping mask on and then they fall asleep. You know, everyone has their own little habits. But twins is a different beast and uh, what you have to do is, is really what keeps you sane. Whatever makes you feel good, like you're doing what's best for your baby and this is the time to just take over as the mom, as the parent, and just make whatever decision you feel best with in your heart because everyone's gonna feel very strongly about their sleeping approaches. And whatever you choose to do is, is just gonna be perfect and beautiful and uh, as long as everyone's healthy, that's what matters. But um, yeah, I really don't know what to attribute the, the long sleeping stretches to with my boys. We have a bedtime routine. We have a feeding routine. I mean, maybe it's the routine. Maybe it's just being home, but I, I really don't, I don't know. It's very exciting and I love it. <laughs> but I think I just got some angel babies on my hands. I don't know, but uh, anyway. That's all for, for this video. I hope this was helpful and feel free to leave a comment with any questions you might have. Um, I can answer from my own experience, um, but that's pretty much all I can, you know, give you it's my own experience. So anyway, <laughs> I hope you're doing well and I hope you're sleeping because sleep is very valuable. <laughs> Anyway, I will see you in my next video. Bye.